Hi, I'm Eric Elliott. I write billion dollar software with hundreds of millions of users. And today I'm going to share with you the secret of simple code. But before I do, head on over to ericelliottjs.com and sign up. I post lots of really great content there on JavaScript and software development guides and principles and and functional programming and object-oriented programming, just lots and lots of stuff. In fact, I have a lesson on this topic that goes into way more depth and covers it a lot better over there. So head on over, sign up, check it out. In the meantime, let's get down to it. Let's talk about the secret of simple code. If you touch one thing with great awareness, you touch everything. And this applies to software development. One of the things that junior developers think is they need to write lots and lots of code to create lots and lots of value. And they get stuck in this game trying to be hyper productive by typing faster. But software development isn't about how fast you type. It's about the value of the code that nobody needed to write in the first place. It's about doing more work with less code. And I don't mean just a little more work. I'm talking about 10 times more work with one tenth of the amount of code. This is possible. And there are lots of studies that back this up. The best software developers are 10 times more productive than their peers. In fact, they can be 100 times more productive. And the way that they do that is that they're masters of abstraction. They write the code that makes code 10 times easier to write. And that's important. That's the key. That's the secret that you need to understand to become one of these legendary 10x developers. So secret number two. This secret was shared with me by John Maida, not directly, through his book, The, the Laws of Simplicity. The secret is simplicity is about subtracting the obvious and adding the meaningful. And the moment that I heard this quote, my mind went racing back to high school. I had a programming teacher. I, the, the only class I ever really took on software programming um, in high school, this guy gave me some lessons that I thought I knew already. I'd been programming for years. I'd been programming since I was six years old. I was a little kid when I started programming video games. And um, I thought I knew it all. And then this lesson came along and I was like, oh yeah, abstraction, simplicity. Yeah, this is, this is stuff I already know. I know how to write a function. I know about variable substitution. I know this stuff already. So I kind of wrote it off. And then 10 years later, it dawned on me. 10 years later, this lesson came flooding back into my mind. And I was thinking, <laughs> my mind was completely blown. I was thinking, I learned all this the hard way because I didn't pay attention to the lesson that I had in my programming class in high school. And that was that we take these great big problems and we break them down into lots and lots of little, smaller, easier to solve problems. And then we compose those solutions to form our applications. Well, the key to that is breaking down that big complex problem into problems that are more general, that can be used to solve a lot of other problems as well. And that's a fascinating topic. That's what abstraction is all about. And to do that well, first we need to subtract the obvious. And in software development, that means the repeated parts. So we're looking for the parts of the software that we're doing over and over and over again. You may have heard of the term dry, D-R-Y, right? Uh, it stands for don't repeat yourself. Um, we end up repeating ourselves all the time when we're developing software. But the key is not just to like take that repeated stuff and get rid of it. It's also to create really, really good abstractions, which allow us to add the meaningful. Meaning we want to use those abstractions in a way that when we supply, when we pass our arguments to that function, we're passing just what needs to be different. Let's explore this a little bit more. So let's talk about this. This function is going to take an array, some kind of list of things, and it's going to iterate over that list of things and multiply everything in that list by two. So it's going to take numbers 
and multiply them by two. It's pretty simple, but there's a lot of stuff in this that could be generalized, right? It could be hidden behind an abstraction, and then we wouldn't need to do it every time. The first thing that jumps to mind is all of this code. So let's look at this. This is the obvious stuff. This is the stuff that our abstraction needs to rip out and hide from us and, and keep away from us, right? The only meaningful bit is this bit right here. This stuff that's creating the new list and iterating over the list and, and even the assignment half of this one line that is actually interesting and meaningful, even this part can be abstracted away. And even this returning the new list part, all this stuff can be hidden away behind an abstraction. And that is the secret, the secret that I'm talking about here. The meaningful stuff is really, even this first part isn't that meaningful. This part is the meaningful stuff. It means for each item in this list, I want to multiply that number by two. That's the only thing that's really meaningful in our particular use case, right? Because what if our, what if our data set was only one thing? What if it's just a box that has one item in it? Then this iteration stuff doesn't really apply very well, right? Um, but also, what if our list is not an array at all? What if it's, I don't know, a stream or an object or a, you know, an object keyed by ID is super common in our software design, right? Um, or what if it's not an object or a or, uh, an array, what if it's like a tree, right? And we have to like dig down into the tree like the DOM, right? What if we want to find all the children of some DOM element and iterate over those, right? Then all this code, this, this code that ties us to dealing things with things as if they're an array, all this code is meaningless in those contexts. So we can't reuse this code as well. Let's look at another idea of how to do this. This code doesn't do any of that iteration. It doesn't dive in and, and look at each element of, the, of an array and assign, well, it does, but it's hidden behind the abstraction, right? We don't have to think about it because we just call the map method. And the key to this map method is that anything can implement this map method. We can implement a function right now that implements this map method. Let's, let's, let's just do that const box equals, let's make a box that only contains one value. Let's take the value as the input, and then we'll create this map method on this box. Um, should probably look like something like this, right? It takes some function f, like, like this one did up here, and, and just applies that to the value in the box, right? So um, we, oops, I did this backwards. <laughs> Let's do f of value, right? And then we just put it back in another box, just like the array would, right? If you call map on an array, it doesn't spit out all the values raw. It just wraps them in another array. So that's what we're going to do here. Um, yeah, and that's it. Now, if we passed a box of 20 into our double list thing, it would work. We could, we could totally do this double list box 20, and this would spit out a box of 40, right? Which is fantastic. We can make that more obvious if we do two string like this, and then um, we call this function. It just gives us a string that says box of, and then interpolate our value here. There we go. Now you could console.log that thing, and it would spit out this, right? It spit out box of 40 for you. Um, I'm going to let you prove that to yourself. In the meantime, let's get back down to business. So basically what we're saying here is that we can take code that looks like this. This is several lines, lo lines long and there's a lot of looping logic and iteration and adding stuff, keeping track of your index and all kinds of stuff that doesn't need to be in the code. And we can turn that stuff into... This, this, which is really just a one-liner, right? I just wrapped it over two lines for readability's sake, but it's really a one-liner, right? Super, super easy to, to understand. This has lots of advantages, though, right? 
it not only will work on arrays, it will also work on streams or trees or whatever kind of data structure we want to throw at it. As long as we put a map method on that data structure, this is going to work, right? But this map method also works with other kinds of data, not just strings, but we could, like, we could do something like this, get names equals and take an object, like maybe a user, right? Um, we'll, we'll just call this a person, right? And we'll take this person object and um, we'll, we'll actually, this should be an array, right? <laughs> of people, right? And we'll take each people object and just map people dot map and then um, person, right? And then person dot get or dot name. Let's just say it has a property name on it. And we want to abstract all the names and just create an array of names. So we start with an array of people and we want to create an array of names. Let me wrap that over the line so you can see it, right? That's all you got to do. So this map method is super, super powerful because it lets us operate on numbers or objects or whatever we want to pass into it, it's going to work. That's the key, right? We reuse it over and over again. Instead of writing the same code over again, over and over again, we reuse the same code on lots and lots of different applications, lots and lots of different things. Because that code sharing, our ability to reuse the same tools over and over again to do different kinds of work, that gives us superpowers. That means we can write a lot less code, a lot less code. And that's super important because in the beginning of computer science, software was complicated enough that they called it the software crisis, right? The hardware that they used tended to be pretty simple and it just mostly worked most of the time. But the software that they created tended to get really, really big and really complex and really hard for any one programmer to understand and keep it in their head and really know what's going on, right? Um, that doesn't have to be the case. But in, in software development today, it's way more complicated way bigger, way more intense. If you printed out the source code for the lunar module um, that was used to land on the moon, right? It would have been the size of like a filing cabinet, which sounds huge, right? Because if you think about reading a book, if a book goes longer than 400 pages or so, I'm like, when is this going to be over? <laughs> when am I going to be done learning this? But imagine like printing out all of your source code, which is way more dense and way more dry, way harder to read than a regular book, right? Print that out. It's the size of a filing cabinet. Um, modern software like Facebook, Twitter, stuff like that. If you printed out the source code to Facebook, it would probably occupy, it'd probably be the size of several Buildings, not just any kind of building, though, like the size of a skyscraper, the size of like the largest residential buildings in San Francisco, and, like a city blocks worth of that. That's a lot of code to understand, right? The key to simplicity, the, the secret, right? The really, sec the really big secret that we're after is how to reduce that mountain of code that we're producing, how to get a lot more done with a lot, lot less. And when you master that, when you master that, you will be a 10x programmer. I guarantee it. Talk to you next time.